All right. I believe everyone is back in the room. Welcome back, everyone. I hope everyone enjoyed session one. Before we move on to session two, we just need some announcements to take place. The exciting part of today's summit, we also have three wonderfully wrapped baskets, which I'm going to share in the chat. So we are having like a little bid war to see who outbids each other to win these final baskets. Um, the baskets include a lemon basket, which has like lemonade, Trader Joe's chips, some cups, some plates, an Amazon gift card. Um, the watermelon basket has a lot of small business shop uh, vouchers, which is really important, especially nowadays to support your small businesses um, with some watermelon plates and, you know, to tie in all the summer fuels. And then lastly, we have the basket from Laura with the Young Living Essential Oils, with oils, bath bombs, books, the whole nine yards. Um, so I will put that link in the chat um, for everyone to check out the website um, before we move forward to session two. And Jeremy, if you can just announce the sponsors um, for the gold sponsors who've participated in this event today, I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you everybody for participating as well. Um, we want to thank our gold sponsors, New Jersey Natural Gas, and our very own Catherine Dwyer. Um, so thank you so much for that support. Thank you. Um, so before we move on to session two, I will go through the topics. Um, the topic of session two is communication. So the first uh, room will be digital marketing beyond social with Dawn. And the second room will be effective networking with Therese and Bonnie. Um, so I will set up the breakout sessions just like I did before. And if anyone is struggling, please let me know. And I will help you move to a room like I'm transferring a conference call. Because you kind of pop up to the top. I am covering a lot. I do talk really fast. So if you miss something, feel free to reach out to me later if we don't have enough time now. Uh, or hopefully we have enough time for questions. Um, I tried to be as precise as possible. So we're going to get started. So we're going to talk about digital marketing beyond social. Now, today we're going to talk about graphic design overview, uh, the website must-haves, reasons you should start blogging, benefits of email marketing, and SEM versus SEO explained. So graphic design, when someone starts their business, my first and foremost is that you need a logo. You need some jumping off point, whether it be um, a feel for your business, colors. Uh, what I do when I make websites is I actually take the colors of your logo and we kind of go from there. You want everything to go around. Um, the third point of that, and I'm going to say it a bunch of times is consistency, making sure that what you're putting out is consistent. So for, you know, Lotus Blossom, we now know it's that, you know, deep purple. We know, like, as soon as I see it on social media, I know it's that. Me, I have to be a little bit more obnoxious in your face kind of thing. So we're the big, the purple, with, you could see the purple wall behind me. In my old office, I had one room that was purple and one room that was this color blue. So you want that consistency. So people, as soon as they see it, can think of you. It's that brand awareness and the brand awareness starts number one with graphic design. So you want to make sure first you have that logo. Everything is consistent um, you, and it's professional. So what I mean by professional, even if you have a nursery school and you know, nursery schools that, you know, you're going to want the, everything to be cutesy and fun. It can still be professional. It can still be, have that professional look to it with whatever you do, even if it's not something that's quote unquote professional, you know, little kids running around and, you know, playing with crayons can still have a professional look when people are looking for your brand. You want to make sure, again, those consistent graphics and fonts. Um, it is hard to do that sometimes. Even during this presentation, I did have to go back and make sure all my fonts were consistent. You want to make sure that the look of whatever you are doing reads to what your business is. So everybody's currently, you know, you're on the top of mind. 
And with that, you want to make sure you use that on social media. The only place I, I do not believe you should use your logo is on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, you have to have your face. People do not trust when somebody tries to connect with you if they cannot see who you are. So make sure on LinkedIn, it is your professional picture, uh, not a picture of you and your kids. Although, you know, we all want to see that you want a professional look. That being said, you don't necessarily need to pay for um, professional pictures. Uh, phones are very, very nice. Do a photo shoot with a friend. You know, it doesn't have to be at your desk. Mine's in a park, but make sure it's a nice picture of just you. And it looks like you really tried to take a picture of yourself and not just cropped it out of another one. Um, why are graphics important? First impressions matter. You know that as soon as you see somebody walk in or you see a website, you, your first impression is first and foremost. And graphic design starts that first impression. Consistency is credibility. We're going to say that over and over again. Creativity kills competition. So if you're more creative than a counterpart, you're going to win either a bid, a client, or even just a phone call. Um, maybe you don't, you know, maybe they called you because your website was better, your graphics were better. And your message matters. So it tells your story. Again, I have to be poppy. So my colors are, um, you know, top of mind. Sorry, Jerry, you're right in my, so you're going to be my uh, person, but Jerry's, you know, it's hers is about encompassing women and, you know, making sure that they're feeling well. And you can tell that from her logo. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> she popped it up. If anybody wants to look at her. Um, and it is, you can see it's an, it's an empowering woman that, you know, wants to discuss what's going on in her life. Website must haves websites. Um, response, uh, responsive design. So responsive just means that it looks good on a tablet, on a phone, on a desktop. It moves from one to another. Not only is this great for a client, it's also great for your SEO, which we're going to talk about later. Back to that consistent branding. Back to that professional look. You want to make sure it's professional. Again, is it a nursery school? Is it a dog groomer? Is it a toy store? You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, a financial advisor to look professional. Everyone, every business needs to look professional, no matter what it is. A contact form. Now, <laughs> contact forms, I'm like on the fence on this one. I don't have a contact form. If you have a really good CRM, definitely use the CRM contact forms. As far as some of the websites out there like Wix, there's a lot of times they break. So I, I agree with the contact form. I would, I would push using a CRM over the actual website itself. If you have a contact form on your website, um, make sure you're just checking it. You know, I have one on my website. I just check it every once in a while. It, it, it's been fine, but I just get a little weary of that sometimes because people aren't on top of checking and making sure that it's still working. Testimonials. Now this is big um, in a few ways. You want to make sure that you have testimonials on um, Google for sure, Facebook. Take those testimonials for people that aren't maybe computer savvy and only looking at your website. They can see them on your website. But those people that are computer savvy, I think we all know we kind of use those uh, reviews on Google or anywhere. I mean, I don't know about you, but I will not buy something that's four stars or less on, on um, Amazon. Will not. <laughs> I click that button and it has to be four stars or more. It's the same with businesses. People are really looking what other people are saying. And it's okay if you get a bad review. I mean, it, it's, it's, I'm, it's devastating, but it just shows that, you know, you're, as long as you respond in a professional manner, it just shows that you're on top of what you're talking about on top of your clients and, um, and on top of everything that's going on. Um, geography, you want to make sure that on your website, you put where, if you're only servicing mama County, put that on your website. If you're doing all of New Jersey, put that on your website. You want to make sure that people know, oh yeah, if I call them, they will call me back. Make sure you have a eye catching headlines, you know, look at us, you know, call to, um, the call to action is different. The call to action is the last one. That's basically contact us today, uh, click here, fill out our form, those kind of things. The eye catching headlines is like websites, social media, Google ads. Those are on my website because I want to make sure people know those are the big things that we do. People do not read anything anymore. So you want to make sure that you have either popping icons or popping headlines. Why should you blog? Okay. So blogging, you want to connect with your customers. 
you want um, new content. What I love about blogging is a lot of times I'll take my blogs. I do a lot of speaking events. I'll take a blog and use it for a speaking event. I'll take a blog and use it as material for marketing. So if I do the five must-haves of LinkedIn, there's five posts I can have, you know, Tip number one, and or you, I'm, if any of you have seen our videos, we do that a lot. We'll do one, we'll do a series of videos and we'll take that from content that we've come up with from our blogs. You're, you're demonstrating that you're knowledgeable. You're demonstrating that you know what you're talking about when people are coming to your website. It helps with your search engine optimization. Again, we're gonna talk about that later. It builds your brand awareness along with those, you know, definitely with the design element of that. Uh, that comes with the graphic design and there's great return on investment statistics. So B2B businesses that blog receive 60, 67% more leads than those who don't. And then 57% of marketers say they've gained customers specifically through blogging. 57% of marketers say they've gained customers specifically through blogging. So those statistics are pretty good. 67% more leads, 57% more customers. I mean, that's a no brainer. You don't have to go crazy with blogs. You do not have to go crazy with blogs. I mean, shoot for one a month. That would be awesome. Then try two. And we have a great um, blogger in our group, Joanne Colella. If you need somebody, if you can't do it and there's a block, she can do it for you. It's wonderful. Uh, and then you just make sure, you know, it's what you want to say. Okay. Email marketing. What can email do for you? It's a cost-effective tool that can improve sales, improve communication with your audience or customers or potential customers. It, can, it will generate traffic to your website because if you do an email, you're making sure there are links to your website, whether it be a sale or just a blog. It, uh, a lot of clients we have are, one of our clients is an HVAC client and he is only does, um, actually, this is an awesome story. He only does commercial HVAC. So we were sending it out to a small list, about 400 clients. One of the clients was the USPS, um, United States Postal Service, and he sent it to 500 other United States Postal Service um, um, locations. And now we have, not only do we have 500 more emails, but this person forwarded this blog that said, this is what you need to do. Call this company if you need them. And this was just because we had him on the email list and we did a blog of, and it was just last month about your spring HVAC tips. It's an awesome way to increase those leads, which was my last thing of what email can do for you. Your, the tips, some tips I have is making sure you're creating personalized content. You can have different, um, you can have different content. You can have different, um, what are they? Audiences. So you can have one that is, you know, let's say college students, because I know we have a few on here. We can have one that's for current clients. You can have one that's for potential clients and you can send out personalized content to each of them. You want to make sure you're collecting feedback and surveys. I did. Um, I try to do surveys for my current clients. Do you like this? Do you not like this? Is there anything you want to say? There's a great um, way to upsell. It's also a great way to make sure that you're, you're meeting your clients needs. You want to send um, timely campaigns, uh, making sure, you know, I'm not sending the spring tips in July, uh, July, because that's the summer. You want to make sure they're on time and on, on exactly what your clients want to see. And you want to make sure you're providing value to your audience and keeping your customers' emails up to date. That's a big one. Making sure that the, all the emails that you have are completely up to date. Email has a return on investment of 122%. It's over four times higher than other marketing, um, like social media, direct mail, paid search. 40% of B2B marketers say email newsletter are the most critical to their content marketing success. And 99% of consumers, just remember this is consumers, check their email every day. 99% check their email every day. That's people that are going to buy from you and they check their email every day. So that's awesome. Those are great statistics. Um, okay. So, oh, I'm making good time. We'll have a lot of time for uh, questions. Okay, so, uh, I talk fast, I told you that. Okay, so we have um, SEM versus SEO. SEM is search engine marketing, which is um, the paid results. I call it pay to play. 
It's the pay to play results. The search engine optimization is organic search results. Okay, so um, this is search engine marketing. I have a client, they're called Vintage Truck Purveyors. It's, uh, they're called, they're Oppies. They are small trucks from Europe that people are turning into mobile coffee bars, mobile bars, mobile florists. They're really awesome. And we do their, we do their Google ads. Now, when you search for um, Piaggio Ape, they should come up first, maybe first or second, but we really try to get them first. Um, but you'll see this word ad, and I'm sure you've done it. If you search for a plumber, the ads come up. If you, and that actually plumbers have to pay a ton of money. We have a client that's a plumber. Um, but if you search for, um, Let's say, uh, you know, blog writer. I don't know. There ad, there's ads that come up at the top. And then underneath is where that organic search comes up. This is play, pay to play. We are paying Google to get in this top spot. There are many things that go into the pay to play, like making sure that there's keywords on your page, making sure that um, you're spending enough money because it's your budget is based on what your competitors are paying. So you need to make sure that in order to pay to play, you're paying enough. And then there's also, um, there are also, we want, uh, Google needs to make sure that the landing page is exactly what you're going to. So if somebody put in Piaggio Ape uh, customization, we want to make sure they go to our customization page. You see how it says customize shop? We don't want to just go to the regular page. We want to make sure it's going to the page that is specifically going to the ad, which is specifically going because somebody put in those terms. So that's search engine art marketing. That's basically, it's a pay to play platform. Now, search engine optimization, this is search engine optimization. When you search vintage, or if you search vintage truck purveyors, they should come up first. If you search um, Piaggio Ape, you wanna make sure you know that you're on the first page. No one's going to that second page. It's very hard to do search engine optimization. If you're not somebody that's going to pay a company like us to do the search engine optimization, the biggest first rule is to make sure your Google business page is up to date. Make sure all the information is there. Um, make sure your, your, there's those reviews that I was talking about. You want to make sure that you have those reviews. You want to make sure that it shows that I can do online appointments. It shows my address. My hours are up to date. My phone number is up to date. I'm actually going to put a YouTube video in the chat for everyone to be able to make sure that they, um, they can go. It's a nice video that just basically shows what they can, you can accomplish and what you can do. Cause even some stuff they add completely. Like there was one thing I was watching a video and I was like, Oh, I don't have that. And I had to run it into my business page and make sure mine was at perfectly up to date as well. So it's a constant making sure that everything's good. So just to recap graphics, you must have a logo and professional consistent look. That consistency is key. Email marketing, try MailChimp for free or AWeber for a fair price. Websites, responsive, make sure it's responsive with consistent branding. You want enough information for people to get the gist of your site, but not too much wording. People don't read anything anymore. Write your first blog today or hire someone to do it and see what return you can get. It does take a while. You're not going to write a first blog and get those 500 emails. We, I've been working with that client for... Oh, it has to be about two years. He's gotten return, you know, over those two years, but we hit the jackpot this uh, last month. And um, search engine marketing. Remember, marketing is that pay to play. Check to see if there's a return on your investment. I had a client yesterday. It was $84 a click. There was no return for her. Absolutely not. But then I have clients that are $2 a click. Complete return for them. Um, and we will do a free audit for you if you would like to know if you're, you know, if you can pay to play. And then search engine optimization, start with your Google business profile and it's google.com backslash business. And that's my information if you need it. Um, but I'm going to stop sharing so I can see everybody and see what questions we have. So the first question we had was, how can you keep your brand consistent without being too repetitive? That's a great question. What I do is I try to just use the colors. So you don't necessarily have to use, you know, 
um, with me with the, you can see like I have like a little feather piece. I don't need to use that feather piece in everything, but I do use purple and blue in as much as I can. So to me, it's more about the colors, the feel. If you are, um, let's say the nursery school, you're gonna use a lot of kitty things. For with me, I'm using a lot of things that have to do with social media or, you know, whatever it is. So you can definitely, you know, do it without being too repetitive. You just take those colors and take the feel and that's, that's what you go with. Should we use personal picture on our business LinkedIn page? No, your business LinkedIn page is for your business. Great question. Is there a certain way when emailing to have a better click rate? Oh, there's so many ways. That's a little bit of a, <laughs> who is that? Devin C. Uh, Devin C. I am going to, can you put your stuff in the chat and I will reach out to you directly. Um, Cause there is, uh, you can be, just Google it too. There's so many different things that you can do. Uh, it's kind of the same as what your website is, you know, making sure that it's not too wordy, but having those big pops of color, making sure don't put too many pictures because Google, um, a lot of search engines, you know how you make those Canva pictures for like social media. Don't just plop them into an email. It's not going to work because sometimes it will make the, the, your, your email searches for wording and it can't search a picture. So you have to make sure the wording is actually in the email itself and just add pictures that maybe you used in Canva or in your other um, non-repetitive um, social media to make sure that it's there. Um, I cannot ask my clients for reviews due to HIPAA laws. Should I ask friends? You definitely can. Absolutely. I would. Um, I would do as much as you can, uh, you know, and I would Oh, I wish there was a way around that, but there's probably not. Um, but yeah, I would ask as many people as you can. You know, it's I actually asked um, the Tom's River Chamber. I'm in. I'm on the board of the Tom's River Chamber. I've been on the board of there for a while. I'm also on the board of the Monmouth Regional. Both are amazing. Um, and so I wanted to. I did ask them to write me a review because they've known me for like eight years. So I wanted to make sure. You know, it's a. So yes, there's definitely people you can ask that might not necessarily be clients. So I went through the ones in the chat. Do we have like a minute left? Does anybody have any other, well, a list a little less or a little more than a minute. Anybody have any other questions? Let's give Dawn a round of applause for her wonderful talk this morning. Thank you. Um, do we have any college students on? Cause I did have notes and I missed them. If there are any college students on, you can make a website with your resume or CV. And that's a great way to show that you could do something a little bit different. And then as far as blogging, that's a great way to start showing that what you know, what you're doing and you know that you should be hired. So um, those are two big things that you can do yourself, not just as a business perspective per, um, you know, and even just making sure you have that LinkedIn up to date with your picture and a professional picture, not one from a college party. <laughs> Great point, Dawn. Um, all right, everyone, I'm going to close the room. So you should be transitioned back into the main room very shortly.